everyone, Nick here. Hope you guys are doing well. And whenever I ponder the innovation, science, and engineering that have in many ways enthroned our species as the world's dominant life form, I am truly stumped when it comes to thinking about what comes next for us. Surely talk of cyborgs, biohacking, and transhumanism proves as inspiring as it is redoubtable and at times inscrutable. It's clear that our world is in every way sweetened by technology, but at the same time weathered by its imposed addiction and reliance. We constantly yearn for this reconciliation between the innovations that have made us so powerful and the ones that silently pull us apart. Moreover, realities like genetic engineering, artificial intelligence, and automation-induced unemployment force us to wrap our heads around a single question. How will technology affect humanity in the next 50, 100, or even 200 years? Many people believe that the answer to that question lies in the idea of transhumanism. First coined by scientist Julian Huxley in the early 1900s, transhumanism is the intellectual movement that posits biological enhancement through technology. This means cyborgs, bionic limbs, neuroprosthetics, and so on and so forth. So naturally, what are the 21st century frontiers of human augmentation? And why are many people calling cybernetics to be the prevailing marker of our continued evolutionary success? Are cyborgs just another hype train of engineering disappointment, or do they signal a true symbiosis of man and machine, where technology is no longer used to replace us, but rather equip us for the next generation? Let's check it out. You're already digitally superhuman, claims Elon Musk. His stone-faced reference to the sweeping influence of smartphones, personal assistants, and artificial intelligence is not new and it's very true, but it still maintains the organic boundary that divorces human and machine. Let me explain. These devices, which line our fingertips and subsist on our attention, might rule us by proxy, but they do not yet pierce the inherent biology that makes me a human and my iPhone just an iPhone. Until now. Enter biohacking, the undeniably transhumanist practice that seeks to blur every line. This fledging community of engineers and designers combine the greatest technology with invasive surgical procedures to create the world's first cyborgs. Pittsburgh startup Grindhouse Wetware brilliantly commercializes this idea with their offering of subdermal implants that are Bluetooth enabled, NFC capable, and downright unorthodox. In fact, their flagship device, Northstar, is an implant that goes in the hand and it promises to take the industry by storm with biometric tracking and smart home connectivity. Granted, such prototypes are usually fraught with empty chatter, but it's clear the transhumanist reality is rising, and it's one better told with the inspiring tale of Jason Barnes. After losing his right arm in a workplace accident, Jason was outfitted with a bionic variant that not only revitalized his professional drum aspirations, but also helped him accomplish what no drummer could do before. His new limb afforded a three-way independence between two arms, meaning that he could play three distinct stick patterns all at the same time, a feat impossible by even the greatest drummers alive. Clearly, the juxtaposition of Jason's success with the needs of professions like doctors, astronauts, factory workers, and so on, and you can see how drummers aren't the only ones that stand to benefit from cybernetic augmentation. Now, don't get me wrong, I fully believe in the transhumanist future, but I remain very skeptical when it comes to this hybrid man-machine symbiosis that's often brought forth by the world's leading scholars. One such academic, Yuval Harari, who also happens to be the best selling author of the book Sapiens and its runaway sequel, Homo Deus, is a lot more sure than I am. He contrives this future that is defined by designer bodies and these part organic, part bionic life forms. He says that one day you'll be able to surf the internet with your mind and that bionic limbs are going to become the standard and that most importantly, you will delegate much of your life to algorithms that know you better than you know yourself. Harari's prediction of the future is very clear, and in an effort to understand why, I want to take a look at all of the technologies of today that might be able to help us get there. 
First things first, Elon Musk's neural lace, a super fine mesh that promises to merge with the brain and give its user digital computing abilities. But the truth is that such technology proves very far-fetched without a functional prototype or tangible research to point to. So instead, let's look at exciting research that's done in the field of mind reading. Researchers at ASU were able to use electrode implants and EEG readings to convert brain signals into elaborate motion commands. They would then use these commands to drive a fleet of drones using only the user's mind. Moreover, Duke's preeminent neuroscientist Miguel Nicoletti works with patients who have spinal cord injuries and combines them with use of a brain-machine interface that can help them control an entire exoskeleton, again, using only their minds. I will admit that such technology proves promising when it comes to creating Huxley's new kind of transhumanist existence, but I will say that there is a weighty difference between using technology and its potential for widespread biological integration. The latter does prove promising with research like this, but let's exercise restraint and pragmatism wherever we can. As we delegate more responsibility to the technology around, and in some cases in us, it's clear that there's this burgeoning intimacy between machines and the organic bodies that comprise us. As Harari puts it, these innovations are no longer dumb tools like a hammer or a knife. Instead, they are intelligent entities that study and enhance us over time. Regardless of how fully you believe that future, Consider this. There are more than 100 billion neurons in the human brain, and current prosthetics can only process sensory input from no more than 100. It's clear that humans aren't going anywhere anytime soon until technology can learn to supplant our, at this point, very understated faculties. Is the future promising? Hell yeah. But will we be so advanced that our descendants will look back and realize that they are no longer the kind of animal that built the Great Wall of China or wrote the Bible? I don't think so. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for making it this far. Click my links down below to read my Huffington Post articles and follow me on social media when you can. Thanks, guys.